Welcome back to the channel. Today, I finally get to share something with you all that I'm super excited, super proud, and happy to actually finally be in a spot to say, hey, this is good to go. This team's going to work. This duo, Artak and Mithrala, Stage 10, Hard Mode Spider, is something that you can build, you can run, and you can reliably expect that it's going to do well. So after testing it, for me, it's been about a 97% consistency. I'll show you guys the entire RSL helper breakdown in just a minute. But I also want to say this has been a massive gym drain because I'd go in and change one mastery because I'd fail, say, five before doing like 20 matches or something. Obviously, I don't want to do that. That is awful. So I go change one mastery. Small little tweaks, 150 gems here, 300 gems here for blessing changes. It's been expensive. So if you could drop a like on this video, if you enjoy this content, it'd be very much appreciated. Subscribe, you know, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. But as far as the actual consistency, so you guys know that I've actually tested this. Here we go. The first screenshot, a minute 17 is the average time. Wins, 47 out of 48. Spiders cave hard, 10. There we go. It's the first group of food right here. So 47 out of 48. And then the next one is this group of food. Don't pay attention to these stats. They are wrong. Um, this is 32 out of 33. 96%, 97% basically win rate. Spiders, stage 10 hard, one minute, 15 average. Come back here and look at this one right here. And it's probably gonna be right about that one minute, 15 as well. The fastest that I've seen is the uh, thumbnail. I think it's probably like 45 seconds, 45 or 50 seconds. I forget which one. Um, but every now and then you do get some crazy fast ones because of how Soul Reap lands, all that kind of stuff. Just, hey, sometimes the runs are extremely fast. This one right here should kill right here. So a minute 25-ish, Soul Reapers come out. Okay, it didn't. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer fight, but it's okay. Duo, I'm not worried about it. It's never been over two minutes, I don't think. So it'd be interesting if it is. Usually if it goes past two minutes, you're getting into some sketchy territory and it may even fail. Actually, we may actually be getting into some sketchy territory here, which would be super strange. Um, but honestly, right now with the rotation, it's perfectly fine. Usually what happens is the spider will eat stuff and Artak will be using the A2 right after she eats stuff. That's when the run will actually fail. This is not going to be a fail. I have zero doubt whatsoever this is going to be perfectly fine. Because of the rotation, it's still on point. One more hit from Artak. Boom. Everybody's dead. Two minutes and two seconds. So a little bit longer than what I would expect it to be. I'll do another run later on so you guys can see that it's usually not that long. Obviously, from the RSL Helper screenshots, you can see right there, it's not usually that long. But as far as this team goes, is it um, relatable, accessible, free-to-play friendly? Absolutely not. It is not at all. Matter of fact... I have another video right here. Search up Taraku, Artek, and Mithrala. This video is much more achievable. If, you can, if you're considering possibly building this team, but you're not able to quite hit these stats, go watch this video, build this team. This will help you out. However, today's video is just going to be on Spider because I was watching back on the other video, and you guys can let me know your uh, thoughts on this as well, but I'm going to have a uh, Ice Golem 10 duo team coming out in the next few days. I'm going to have a Dragons 10 duo team coming out in the next few days as well. And I'll link those videos at the end of this video. So if those videos are up, they'll be linked at the end of this one. But if they're not, well, they won't be linked. So I think dividing them into different videos is going to be a much easier approach because this video, to be honest, when I was looking back at it, if you're looking for spider specifically, this is a clunky video. If you're looking for everything, then it's perfectly fine. But if you're not, then it's it's not great. So I'm not super happy with that, though the, the runs are excellent and it works out perfect. So either way, Neither here nor there. Basically, at the end of this video should be those other two hard mode dungeon duos if you're interested once those get posted. But as far as the presets go, Spider is a one round only dungeon. So round one, open with the A3, prioritize the A3, and then go into the A2. These stats are correct, so you can look at these. You can take a screenshot of this if you want. These are 100% correct for Spider specifically. Next champion, Artak. If anybody was going to click off the video, this would be the point. So we're four minutes in. The watch time should be decent. Hopefully you watched it all to this point. But Artak, 300 speed. Wait till you see the sets he's in, all right? I know. It's a little bit crazy, a little bit ridiculous, but it's what we've got to do. So A3, prior, number one. A2, number two, and then open with the A1. We'll go over all this towards the end. But right now, I just want to go over the basics. Now, as far as the accuracy numbers you're going to want to hit, go over here to Hell Hades website. Stage 10, hard, spider. Just out of curiosity, what kind of drops you're going to get? You get a 1.6% uh, chance of getting six star uh, mythical. Excellent. But then down here, uh, resistance for the spider is 320. So you're going to need to bring at least 345 accuracy. If you're running Artek with Mithrala always, you're going to need 265 accuracy minimum. And as far as the actual win rate, 
we had 79 successful out of 81 matches. That's going to be a 97.5% win rate, which is something I'm happy with. Now, as far as the actual gear for these champions go, Regeneration plus Defiant. I don't know for certain if Defiant is required. However, I have a quad roll speed helm in Defiant. I also have a triple roll speed pair of gloves that are crit rate with some defense percent also in Defiant. They're not fully awakened, not fully ascended, so that would obviously make a pretty good size difference possibly. Um, but ultimately, I don't know if it's required. I tried some other stuff, but the stats is what I was prioritizing and this just so happened to be what I could hit the stats with. Obviously, a 15% damage reduction from the big spider's AoE attack, that's fantastic. Is it required? I don't really know. So you guys can try it. Obviously, try for Defiant. If it fails without Defiant, there you go. That's your answer. I also have a Revenge piece. Revenge is nice. You do have to be careful when building Artak that you don't go overboard on the crit damage. So I was actually having some situations where I put him like 200 plus crit damage, and he doesn't hit hard. But the situations caused it to kill the spiderlings at a weird time, and it just wasn't working great. So when you're building your Artak, try to get as close to these stats as possible. Because if you start to branch off, it's going to be a little more difficult to help you. What I've done with these stats and the Masteries as well, is I've tried to eliminate any possibilities for RNG to mess things up. So you'll see crit rate 100%. If you don't have crit rate at 100% and your run's failing, well, it could be failing because you're not critting. Well, I have 100% crit rate, so that's automatically eliminated good crit damage um three 345 accuracy is what's needed and uh yeah i don't have that i have a little bit less than that apparently but it's okay because mithral is in the lead anyways uh, as far as hp push hp as high as you can get obviously our attack destroys his max hp so the more hp you can get it's going to be better now as far as defense goes there's some interesting interactions so mithrala is giving a defense boost from her a2 ability and you also get extra defense for every max HP percentage you lose. So Artak, in my opinion, doesn't need to have crazy high defense numbers because it does have diminishing returns. And if you have crazy insane defense numbers, it's really just going to be kind of wasted once he's stacking tons of defense, once Mithrala boosts him as well. And it's not really going to give you the benefit that you actually need. So for me, I was trying to get as much HP as I possibly could get. And then obviously, very good speed. I think 290 would work fine, but he is a little bit faster than Mithrala, which is very important as well. But I'll go over the Masteries and everything after that. And you guys can more or less just copy the build. I'll show you the pieces I have. Um, HP plus defense percentage. I would really love for these to be HP plus HP. That would be fantastic. Um, if I could get 80,000, 90,000 HP, I think this would be so much more consistent, which granted, it's 97% right now after 81 runs. So I'm not really sure how much more consistent it could get, uh, but I can also ascend all these. I tried to do this, as strange as it may sound, I tried to do this with as little ascensions as possible because this is not relatable, and I understand that, but I still want it to be as relatable as possible. So I didn't go through and farm Sand Devil. I didn't farm everything to fully max everything out, but this extra defense is nice. This extra potentially HP would be fantastic. All these little things, I'm going to add to him later on, but for right now, I kind of wanted to do the bare minimum possible. But either way, neither here nor there. That's his build. Let's go to the skills. Everything's fully booked. It needs to be fully booked. Really not much past that to say. Soul Reap. If you were considering anything else besides Soul Reap, don't do it. I tried using uh, I tried using Miracle Heal for Ice Golem, but it wasn't working for what I was trying to do, so that doesn't matter. I tried using... I don't think I used Cruelty... I did try using Brimstone, and it didn't work. It worked a few matches, and then it failed. So it may seem consistent for the first 10, but then it failed, uh, which is too early to be failing, and it was just very, very rough. Uh, so Brimstone didn't work. Soul Reap, I'll show you guys how it works and why it's so important in a little bit. But Soul Reap, very, very crucial. There's possible ways you can build it to not require Soul Reap, but to be honest, just go Soul Reap. Unless you feel like dumping more energy, more gems into this, just go Soul Reap. Now here, you'll see... Back to the thing I was talking about by eliminating as much possible RNG as I can. Well, I have no turn meter boosting masteries whatsoever. Arcane Celerity, don't have it. Rapid Response, don't have it. This is not RNG because all my allies are going to die. I have three allies. So three of them are going to die, giving me that 24 speed boost. Then I have Whirlwind of Death. I'm going to kill six enemies. I mean, I kill the Spiderlings, so I'm going to get this 18 speed boost very, very early. Is it needed? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but this is what I've tested with. You guys can change it up. You can adjust it if you if you need to, but to be honest, these are the masters I used. This is what I know works for what I'm doing. Has a little, the less RNG possible. This is the only thing that's possible RNG. However, 
I was noticing that this prevented the spiderlings from attacking me sometimes, so I kept it. Decreases their, decreases their turn meter from the A1 ability. So I did keep that. These are the masters that I have. Next up, let's talk about Mithrala. So Mithrala, she is in Regeneration plus Immortal. She's at also very similar in the fact that I don't have her fully um, Ascendant gear either. Like we have the top row, no Ascensions. She could have more HP, which I definitely want to get. She has the uh, accessories. She has some Ascensions. HP, would love to have more. Crit damage, I don't need that. And then HP, would also love to have more of that. As far as her actual stats go, for Spider Gen specifically, she is close to r in speed, but she's slower. Make sure she's slower. Uh, you want a little bit slower, so I have, her, I have her 10 speed slower. I've kept it to that kind of 10 speed difference, and it's worked out very well so far. HP, good HP. She places a shield based on her HP, so you really want to push that up as high as you can get, but do not neglect the defense. Defense is very, very important for her. 3,200, she does do increased defense. She does do strengthen, so she is going to be pretty tanky, but if she dies, your run's going to be pretty bad. So she places the Hex, helps you do more damage. In general, make sure she survives. She doesn't need crit rate. Matter of fact, I actually tried her with crit rate, and it, it didn't work. I could have put more effort into it and maybe could have gotten it to work, but at the time, it wasn't working. The things were dying too quick, and it was just a pretty, pretty rough time. And then as far as her accuracy and resistance, honestly, just push her accuracy. Her resistance is going to be perfectly fine. She's never going to have poisons placed on her. So accuracy, she needs that 345 number, but she also brings an aura, so doesn't truly need that. This Mithrala may not work amazing in Arena. However, with this set and the speed, this is actually a pretty decent Mithrala for the Arena. If you could get a banner that ascends a, um, accuracy or resistance and a chest plate that ascends accuracy or resistance, you could actually have a pretty solid Arena built Mithrala. Not specif not a specialized, but pretty good in general. As far as her abilities, the Hex is what we're looking for. Hex is incredible. Uh, the increased defense helps out with the, with our attack actually surviving. And then the cleanse lets us strengthen in the shield. Really just a fantastic champion for all of this. Her passive doesn't really do a ton here, but either way, it is nice. All of her kits nice. Uh, accuracy. And then go Brimstone for her. Uh, brimstone, it's fantastic when it actually hits on the big spider. When it drops the Brimstone, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And it works great for Hydra. So Brimstone and Mithrala, excellent. Now as far as Mithrala goes, I actually have her limited as well on any RNG Masteries. I used to have her with Arcane Celerity, but she was getting around too fast to turns, lapping Artak, and while it could be easier, it also seemed to lead to more inconsistencies, especially on stage 10 where Artak can be crit, they both can be crit, and you have to plan for those crits. So here, we have War Master on both these champions. These champions, you want War Master. You definitely want War Master, War Master on them. That's possible RNG, but it's perfectly fine, and it's worked out the matches that I've done. So these are the masters that I have. These worked out great. Extra speed. Speed, speed, speed. That's what we need. Just a ton, ton of speed. But there we go. Copy these masteries and you should be good. Like I said, if you guys want to jump in here and experiment with things, if you find a way to make this easier, definitely let me know. I'm more than happy to share a team that's like significantly easier than this one with everybody as long as I know it's consistent. And I'm sure the players watching this would love to see a more accessible team as well. But this is a team that I've ran well over 100 times. I've ran it so many times. And finally, I'm happy with the consistency that I have. 97% consistent over the course of 81 runs is a, is a team build that I'm happy to say, hey, you can build this, get these stats, do these masteries. This will be consistent for you on Spider 10 hard. Unless Artak gets changed, unless Mithrala gets changed, unless something weird happens where the champion's kit change, yeah, well, this should work perfectly fine. You can see there that the Soul Reap comes out. Basically what happens well, I'll show you guys again in just a minute. But whenever the big spider eats, you want to make sure Artak, ideally, well, the, the, the speed that he's tuned to, he'll be using that big HP burn within the first one or two turns, right after the big spider eats all the spiderlings, and then activates it. There was no Soul Reap there. So right there, Soul Reap wasn't required whatsoever. But you will see here soon, Soul Reap will play a pretty big part, which actually may be right now. Let's see. The Soul Reap comes out and kills the big spider, I bet. One speed, boom. Hits for 1.4 million. Doesn't kill the big spider, but the big spider is going to die to the poisons or the brimstone anyways, or the HP burn. Dies to something. I don't know what. There you go. It's dead. But as far as what the Soul Reap does, it basically allows for more consistency in the run. Because if you don't know already, the damage numbers you hit for has have a fluctuation. I believe it's plus or minus 5%, but it may even be 10%. So some runs, you may do a ton of damage. That's what causes a lot of... Um, time changes and runs 
is sometimes you could be hitting on the higher end of that threshold and sometimes on the lower end of the threshold. Like you can see all these little spiders, like they get hit with different numbers all the time. That's because of that fluctuation. So the soul reap just now killed one spiderling, I believe, maybe more. But either way, the soul reap allows for a little more cushion, a little bit more protection, a little bit more ease of, hey, just because I'm not hitting the most damage every time, it's still going to be consistent because these reapers are going to come out and kill these spiderlings. I'm actually not worried about killing the spiderlings with our tax skills. I really want the soul reap to come out and kill them because if I'm trying to consistently kill it with our tax skills, I have to push his damage up very high and he's not a very high damage dealing champion. So that's quite a task to do. And it looks, it looks sketchy. Like I'm going to be the first one to say this looks sketchy, bunch of poisons sleep. It looks rough, but it's been tested. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm comfortable with sharing this because of how it looks versus how I've actually ran it. I've ran it so many times, more than confident that this is going to be perfectly fine. It's not going to fail here either. It may go to 140, whatever reason, I guess at a uh, 10, 20 AM, the runs are a little bit slower or something. I guess the spider's just waking up. I don't know what the deal is, but you can see here, we activate that, chop down all the little spiderlings. Mithral is probably going to do her cleanse here, placing the big shield possibly, or the hex. There we go. Big shield comes up. Just when it seems to be a little bit questionable, the big shield comes up. We already used that A2 ability. So it should be an A1 here. Actually, no, fantastic. Why did it get resisted? I don't know. Apparently we resisted most of the little spiderlings there, which is absolutely terrible. We hit this. Now we should hopefully get a cleanse here and then Artek can kill these little spiderlings with soul reap. Maybe not. Okay, he's woken up. Fantastic. There we go. Everything's done. A minute 59. I have no clue why the two runs that I've shown in this video went so sideways, especially considering I've done so many that went perfectly fine, I think. Actually, I don't even know. They, they could have been like that as well. But there's there's variance in the run, of course. It's safe, though. 97% successful. I wouldn't show you guys this video. I wouldn't show you this team if I wasn't comfortable with it. Because I know how it is to build a team that you see from somebody, and you go back, and you're like, this team is not consistent whatsoever. So if you build your champions with these stats, you're going to have a very consistent Spider-10 hard duo. You can see there, not editing, not editing out any of these runs, because I'm confident they're going to be successful. I'm confident they're going to pass easy. All right, guys. So thank you all very much for watching. We did, what, four runs here. So it pushed it up to, I guess, um, 80, 80, uh, 84, wait, no, 83 out of 85, right? So 97.6% consistent. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if it failed one more run fairly soon. But we're not going to roll the dice anymore, guys. So thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like. Very much appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment as well. I'll be coming out with... Ice Golem 10 Hard Duo and Dragon 10 Hard Duo very, very soon. So stay tuned to that. If that video is already out, it will be linked at the end of this one. So either right here or way over there. My green screen cuts off, so my arm can't show you, but it's on the other side of the screen. So guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next one.